Hey, what's up? I got some more lore content for you guys. I wanted to cover the three best performing decks in Eternal Ranked now that there's a reason to play it. That way you have a good understanding of what's strong, whether you want to play the meta decks themselves or if you want to know how to counter them. This meta is completely different than standard, so if you want a fresh climbing experience, whether it's toxic or not, then I got you. Let's see what these strong Eternal decks are, shall we? Welcome to Meta Report. And starting us off, we have the best climbing deck to go for so far, and that is Draven Scion with the newly buffed Draven. Currently, it has a win rate of 58.11% and a play rate of 3.17%, making it the deck to beat. Its best matchups include Lurk, Spiders, Renekton, and Azir Aurelia. Its worst matchups are Variations of Karma Set, Thresh Nasus, and also FTR. So thinking about the general power of discard in Eternal with all the cards that we have to play with, on top of Draven getting buffed back to 3 HP, it's no surprise that this deck has absolutely taken off and popped off in both win rate and play rate. So getting into the list specifically, first we have Draven's biggest fan. 1 mana 2-1, one, when I'm summoned, move Draven to the top of the deck if you don't have him in hand or in play, that's important. So yeah, this is a pretty nice card to tutor Draven to the top of the deck in case you don't open him. That way you have a little bit of early game consistency and the general power of playing Draven's biggest fan on 1, doing something on turn 2, or floating turn 2 so you have Mystic Shot mana, and then Draven on turn 3. So that's really strong, especially attacking on odds. That allows you to play biggest fan, you know, get 2 early damage in if the opponent doesn't develop a blocker, and then Draven on attack 3, which is the best time to play him. So yeah, really good overall. Next we have Double Reborn Grenadier, so we're going to have a lot of discard activators and discard targets. Grenadier is a target, a card that we often want to hit with our discard cards to draw more cards and also to get bonus effects off like damage. So Reborn Grenadier is really cool because upon discard, he also summons himself directly into the field. Now you can do this at burst speed, so you have a burst speed attacker or a burst speed blocker as well, and that's really tricky for the opponent to deal with. Sometimes in a lot of matchups, you can just go on the aggressive, have multiple Grenadiers, have a really strong board and just open attack and swing for additional damage or if you need to play defensively you can use him for that on defense turns. Next we have Zonai Urchin 1 minute 2 1 discard a card to draw one so really good synergy cycle us through the deck a little bit and also hit some of our premium targets like Grenadier. Boom Baboon when I'm summoned create a flame chompers in hand so by himself just a 2 1 body but we have a discard target that we get immediately in our hand that adds to the early game consistency and power of the deck. Fallen Rider, another great discard target. Upon discard, create a 4-2 Fearsome in hand. Again, this can be used aggressively or defensively. You can use it as a Fearsome blocker in case you're fighting things like Wraiths or Spiders, which we're going to be seeing a lot of. And that's why this deck has a winning matchup against Spiders. Risen Rider, very good card into them. Moving right along, we have Triple Mystic Shot, of course. Double Pirouette. Deal 1 to anything and stun an enemy. Just another really flexible tool, can use it aggressively to set up really strong attack turns, can use it defensively to ping enemy units and also alleviate some pressure, so really nice card overall. Next we have Double Rummage to get us through the deck a little bit, and of course the burst speed blockers or attackers are super nice. Alright, we have Draven, our first champion. 3 mana, 3-3, three, three. nice to see you back at 3 HP Mr. Draven. With Quick Attack, very good. When I'm summoned or strike, create a Spinning Axe in hand. Spinning Axe says to play, discard a card in hand. That's really good because we have a lot of targets. And give an ally 1-0. We can use this to trade up into things. We can use it to try to match combat tricks if the opponent is on like Pale Cascade, stuff like that. Spinning Axe, really good at dealing with that. And of course, we can level Draven if he strikes with two total axes, whether it be two axes on the same strike or two separate strikes over the course of a couple turns, or one axe plus whirling death if we're on multiple Dravens. Really insane. Then we can actually use this guy as a pressure tool and transition him into win con with a little bit of damage, right? Got the overwhelm, got the damage amping. Then we have a lot of direct damage spells in our deck to try to close out. So yeah, definitely some really interesting game states can come up if we're fully playing around Draven. But yeah, he's really nice. Just a flexible overall card. Slam in the early game, give us axes for discard, and then just be a really nice body to play around. Get excited. Direct damage, again, another flexible tool. So what's really cool about Draven Scion, uh, if you haven't sensed the reoccurring theme yet, is that it's very flexible. Depending on the matchup or opening hands, it can hit the gas and just go super aggressive and use burn finish, 
or it can play super defensive and use all of the utility and damage spells as removal and that's really cool so if you like that and you want to have a flexible game plan definitely give this deck a shot so yeah get excited just continues on with the theme of being direct damage or removal Next, we have Sump Dredger, 3 mana 4 3. Play, discard a card to draw one, just like Zonai Urchin, but bigger, so very nice. Below back, now this is a new card. 4 mana, fast speed spell, deal 1 to an enemy and the enemy nexus. You can discard up to 2 additional cards to increase the damage to 3 total. So, 3 damage to nexus, 3 damage to an enemy unit of choice. Basically, think of it like Shock Blast, you know, Jace's spell, but at fast speed. So that's really good. And also has discard synergy for two less mana. So really, really insane. Really, really strong card. Can use it as burn finish, can use it as removal, can use it to get down um, an attacker as you prep it up. This one's not burst speed, so you can't do it immediately for the attack action, but it's still really good at fast speed at getting down some resources. Two survival skills. On cast, allies can't drop below one health this round. However, more often than not, we're going to be discarding this with our burst speed stuff like Draven's Axe. When discarded, your strongest ally can't drop below one health this round. That's really good. You can use this at burst speed to give yourself some protection. Your uh, unit stays at 1 HP after the damage goes, but that's still pretty worth. Next we have our other champion, Zion. 7 mana 2-6, but that is a lie because he gains power whenever allies are discarded. So when I'm discarded, grant your strongest ally Overwhelm and place me back into the deck. I have one zero for each card you've discarded this game. And if you discard a bunch of units, right, equaling 35 plus power, then he will level. Leveled Scion says, last breath summon me as Scion returned. That's important because on summon, he rallies. So he's a really big Overwhelm unit. Then he attacks. Maybe he dies. Then you get to attack again. You get a really nice Overwhelm win con along with you know, maybe a wide board that you have developed. So yeah, Scion's a really good finisher, really good synergy for the deck, can pop Overwhelm onto early game units, maybe even level 1 Draven, you know, that might push some damage here and there as well, but hitting some Dredger is also great, things like that. Overall, just a really strong discard card. And rounding out the list, we have Lost Soul, 8 mana, 5, 4. When I'm summoned or discarded, create a Twin Blade Revenant in hand. Twin Blade Revenant is a 4 mana 4 3 fearsome last breath, recreate Lost Soul in hand. So it's a little bit of an infinite cycle engine. That way you can keep discarding Lost Soul, play Revenant, Revenant dies, create another Lost Soul. And that creates a pretty strong win con in very grindy matchups where the opponent is trading one for one with you. They use a removal spell. Okay, well, you get Lost Soul. Then you uh, discard it or summon it, get a Revenant. Then the opponent has to try to remove that again. And you can outgrind the longer matchups. And that's really good. It's a really strong card overall. And also, it's five attacks. So if we're discarding this, I mean, we're getting pretty close to Scion level. So that's pretty important. Normally, Scion level will just happen over the course of the game. But if you are paying attention and you're discarding your high attack cards, um, yeah, you can definitely get Scion level as soon as possible. And then maybe he comes down leveled on seven. And you know, that's a really, really strong win con to play around. And that's it for the deck rundown. Now here's a live commentary game so you can see how the deck plays out. I'll be giving context while I'm playing certain cards and hopefully it gives you a good feel on how to play the deck. So getting right into it, we're going to be fighting Bard Nora. Now please have a little bit of mercy. I'm not super good at this deck. I don't think I've ever played Draven Scion before, so this will be my first time. So I will try my best based on how I think the deck plays. Mulligan's gonna be doomed though. I know I keep big fan. I could probably keep Lost Soul. I could keep Rummage and Survival Skills as well because that's just gonna guarantee me um, Draven. And Survival Skills is pretty good into them since they have pings and stuff. They could probably hit me with the Bard Chime thing that deals too. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm stalling. I'll give him a fist bump and then continue on. So we'll full keep. We'll top deck uh, Draven's big fan, play it. Now they know we're gonna have Draven. But that is okay. We have a second one. In case our first Draven dies, we could just move another Draven to top of deck. That's really interesting. Nora. Yeah, I'm not on Mystic Shot, which would be really nice here. I think if we just curved like Mystic Shot and then Draven, we'd have a really strong early game. But they get away with the portal. Because I uh, didn't mulligan anything. Let's go ahead and do Draven. Draven on attack 3 is a lot of pressure for them to deal with. Interesting. Let's go ahead and do Draven. Right up. Swing with the big fan as well. And let's pre-commit a spinning axe to something. Probably the Fallen Rider. That way we have something to play next turn. And we can start working on a Draven level. I like that a lot. Because if they just full take, then we don't get a level up point. So I want to pre-commit the axe. 
Bonk. Gives us the axe back. And now next time he strikes with an axe, he'll also level. Sump Dredger. Sump Dredger's pretty chill. Um, I guess I could have also done Spinning Axe Lost Soul and have Twin Blade Revenant for this turn. Which would be strong too. Portal Pole is a... Uh, two portals. And a Powder Keg coming in. That's pretty strong. They did just give me a Draven level though, so I am going to take it. Let's do Spinning Axe, Lost Soul, Draven. Go ahead and send it. We still have survival skills as protection for him, especially against damage. And I thought I was already perfect. Very nice. Now we can play our Twin Blade Revenant out, and the next turn we can do some Dredger and Risen Rider, and that curves us for attack 5, and we can get a little bit on the aggressive here. Raven. Ooh, Iron Ballista. That's a pretty big card, too. Boom Baboon, some Dredger, Risen Rider. All good options. I like Boom Baboon. Because then we can some Dredger the Chomper and get that out. And then maybe we can axe it a question. And make it, you know, kill something or trade up into a 1 HP unit. Killing this Nora is also going to be really nice. Don't know how we're going to do it, but it would be huge. Go ahead and do that. Another survival skills. Alright. That is interesting. Our Draven has overwhelmed, so I'm down to swing that into the Powder Keg, right? Also keeps him protected from the Iron Ballista. Seems like the proper attack. We're going to see big damage here. We are. Look at that. Cosmic Binding. Deal 3 and stun 1. So they're going to deal 3 to a Draven. Fun Spinning Axe. Draven. Time for the money maker. Oh, it targeted Twin Blade Revenant because he's a higher cost, right? That's interesting. Let's go ahead and also do this and this. That will target our Draven now. All right. Seems good. That way our Draven lives with 1. He's still going to strike for his axe, so that's good damage. Swing. 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 The Flame Chomper can grab probably the 2-2. Two -two. That way we're threatening Iron Ballista with these and also threatening Nora to come up and block. Otherwise, they might die soon. So, that seems pretty good. Just grab the 2-2. Two -two. Make sure we try to kill these. Just a value trade and then go to 5. That's really risky. That is risky business. Are you lost too? Alright. We killed the Nora. That does, in fact, work for me. So yeah, something I could have done last time was Spinning Axe, the Draven's biggest fan, and then rummage the survival skills. I think that would have been better than using both, but whatever. We have Scion level on 7, right? As long as we discard and play. His, his um, effect is also on play. I didn't mention that. If you summoned uh, or discarded. So as we're playing, we're just going to level him naturally. Ooh, what is this? Okay. Holy guacamole. All scary. Let's go ahead and do this. Get my blocker down here. We have blowback. That is big. That is really big for us. Junk Construct. Um, I guess I could hold the blowback mana in case they do attack. We might be able to use it during the combat. No? Alright. Then we'll play Scion. Ah. Uh. Draven on attack 3, Scion on attack 7. That feels pretty good, pretty powerful. I guess I played as the aggressor in this matchup for sure, right? Went for an aggressive level Draven, go for Scion on 7. If they're not on another stun card, this could be pretty tricky for them. Mini Morph, that is a good out to Scion. Just turn him into a mini T. Honestly, I respect it. We can go ahead and swing with everything. We're just going to push damage. Yep. 
I'm gonna pump a little extra overwhelm on the Draven, unless they Pokey Stick. If they Pokey Stick, I'll be a little mad. Let's go ahead and pump um, Draven plus one. Now we're cooking. Puts them down to six. No Pokey Stick. Okay, very cool. Yeah, and it should be very easy for us to find like a burn lethal. We have blowback, we have a draw card, so we can try to get to get excited or second blowback. And we'll just be good to go. Another draw card. I'm just gonna spam some dredgers. Bardo. Go ahead and some dredger our lost soul. Fallen Rider. Uh, I guess we can go ahead and discard that too. Second bard. Some Chimage, Bard level. Alright. Um, that's not a super big deal. It's nothing personal. And then an attack. Let's put this here and do blowback. This. It's also going to target face. Let's discard Rider and... I guess one of our axes is fine. Yeah, that way we're killing the bard while also dealing three direct damage to the face. Third bard, all right. Well, now Bardo lives with one. That is pretty spooky. I think they should have just done that earlier and then just swung with everything, right? Because that was burst speed. Um, Sump Dredger, let's get rid of the Axe. Because we don't really need it anymore. The plus one damage doesn't really do a lot. We're just going to keep cycling and try to find uh, direct damage lethal. Keep digging. We have Mystic Shot. That almost gets us there. Scion. Yeah, we can whip out second Scion. That warrants a response immediately. Maduli. Maduli is a lot of HP to be honest. Um, we can go ahead and do Draven. This. And that's pretty much it. I think this is all we need to do. We're going to get Maduli to 9 6. Then we're going to get Ballista um, to Draven. And we can Mystic Shot the Ballista. Or we can just send it. Because, like, Draven's going to strike and get the axes anyways. And then I can put the axe on the Scion return. I don't need to swing at Draven again unless they tap to 0. Because I am still a bit worried about Pokey Stick that they may have top decked or something. You have to do this the other way around. If they do it like this, then they just die. Has to be Maduli and then Ballista. There you go. And then I swing again. This time I have axes. My hunger only grows. So it's like, do I keep Draven alive? And sack my Mystic Shot, or do I keep Mystic Shot for potential uh, face damage? I'm not so sure it matters because it's going to translate damage anyways. Maybe keeping Draven alive is better though. Yeah, I think they see it and it's just lethal anyways. Yep, cool. A little bit grindy to close out, but we did it. And the next deck I have for you is one of my personal favorites, as you already know, Jin Annie. Coming in with a win rate of 57.21% and a play rate of 3.04%, it's also a very strong meta contender. Its best matchups include Puff Caps, Nora Set, Yas Katarina, and Trundle Set. The bad matchups are Elise Samira, Poppy Ziggs, Lulu Poppy, and Pirates. So of course, I am very excited to cover Jin Annie. I love this deck. I'm going to be playing an Eternal Iron to Master only climb using Jin Annie uh, with Decimate back in with the addition of Pirouette now, really spicing up the deck, allowing for really strong turns four onward pushes. 
that are really, really scary and make you question if it's balanced or not. So getting into the list, we have Annie, our first champion. Attack deal two, love that. I've seen you play six spells, slow spells, skills, you know, that good stuff. Then she levels and gives you a Tibbers in hand. Tibbers is very strong, being a 655 fearsome. On play, stun an enemy, then deal two to all stunned or damaged enemies. A little bit of wide AoE removal, that way we can keep our attack pressure going. On enhanced attack she does three instead of two when she's leveled there's a little bit of a distinction between her level one and level two attack so that's really nice get that in and then get the extra damage her spell is disintegrate we can use that sometimes with like pirouette to like execute things and that feels really cool Crackshot Corsair, 1-1 one, one, when allies attack, deal 1 to the enemy nexus this is a skill so it will be helping us level annie and also helping us level Jin. Crimson Pijan, who is not a skill unit, however, is still a premium 1-drop aggressive unit. 1 mana 2-2, two, two, support, deal 1 to my support ally to grant 1-1 one, one permanently. So this is a must-remove unit as soon as it gets played, the opponent has to respect it. Otherwise, the Pigeon is going to get out of control and start flocking uh, the opponent's HP down to 0. So if you open multiple Pigeons, that's really good. If you open Pigeon into Rear Guard, that's really good. Then you have a suck target and you get extra damage in the early game. Speaking of rear guard, he is back uh, in our deck since this is eternal. He's been rotated out and I miss him. He's a one mana 3-2, can't block, but is super aggressively statted in order to make up for it. Next we have Legion Saboteur, one mana 2-1, attack call, deal one additional damage to the enemy nexus, another skill, helps Annie, helps Jin, keeps the damage going. Boom Crew Rookie, yet another attack skill unit, 2 mana 1-3, attack deal 2 to the enemy nexus. Really scary if you open both and then you get out like a decimate level of damage just by attacking with two of them, so that's really cool. Um, also really important in the Freljord matchups in order to dodge Avalanche, really scary unit in the early game. Pirouette, just like in the Draven Scion list. It's pretty much the same thing. We're going to be using it primarily aggressively with this deck because we can use this to stack um, Jin Lotus Trap. So if this is like going to proc Lotus, that's double stun for like really cheap. And it's really cool because we can play Tusk Speaker or develop a spell or skill and that gets a Lotus Trap off. And then that actually procs Plunder for us, allowing us to play Pirouette a bit cheaper. That's where this deck edges out over the Draven Scion. We get to utilize Pirouette just a tad bit better. That's why I run it at three of. It's really strong. It can also be used defensively to stop like lifesteal units and things like that while also pinging off something else, making the next open attack even stronger. Next we have Solari Sunhawks. We're going to get into the stun side of the deck. A lot of our skills deal direct damage and a lot of our other skills do stuns. Two mana, two, three, daybreak, stun the strongest enemy. Really good because we're going to be wanting to stun a lot, making it to where the opponent can't block us. Stagehand, same thing, 2 mana 4, 2, play stun an enemy. Instead of Daybreak, we can play this whenever we want. However, it is ephemeral and the stun is targeted. So a little bit of a give and take. I think Sunhawk is a tiny bit better, but Stagehand also comes up, especially opening multiple by like turn four or like attack six. And then you can play out because you're on evens. That feels really good. You can get a lot of cheap damage and a lot of matchups. A speaker, 2 mana 3, 2, overwhelm, on play, deal 1 to both nexuses, so be careful, this will hit you as well, however, it does proc plunder for us to get that pirouette nice and cheap, it does help proc our Jin. it helps get them a little bit closer to dead, so he's really good. Triple Noxion Fervor, one of our finisher cards, deal 3 to an ally, deal 3 to anything, really good to close out, just the last little bit of damage that we need, uh, if this procs Lotus Trap, I mean that's 4 damage, basically decimate at fast speed, so that's really nice too. Jin, attack deal 2 to all stun enemies, level up, you've played 12 fast, slow, or skills over the course of the game. So Jin has a lot going on. One of his passives is that it allows us to deck build in such a way to run a bunch of skill units. Um, instead of having a second region, we have Jin region, and he just counts for everything. As long as the unit has a skill, it doesn't matter what region it's from, that way we get to run Targon, Ionia, bilge water you know a whole bunch of different stuff in the same deck and that feels really cool something else he does is if Jin is in your hand or in play 
Every time he sees three skills, slow speed spells or fast speed spells, he also procs a skill of his own directly from hand or in play depending on where he is. That deals one to the enemy nexus. If he's in play, that will also stun the weakest enemy. So that's really good on defense or on offense. And we want the enemies to be stunned because of the second effect that he has. If he's on the board and also does an attack call, he deals two to every stunned enemy. Now, if you attack in the proper sequence, you can actually get the Lotus Trap to resolve before for this, meaning Jin will stun something during the combat and then immediately shoot it with a deadly flourish. When he levels up, his attack skill becomes deal 4 instead of deal 2, that way we get to decimate the enemy face immediately. It gets to target face after and that's really nice, so he's also a very strong finisher card if he's developed and you get into the mid and late game where you have played enough skills. Next we have Whispered Words, cute little draw card, really nice to just fish for a little bit of burn lethal, right? Get the fervor, get the decimate. You're probably not going to proc reputation, but it is just premium draw for what we do have. Four mana Noxus draw two is pretty good. And it's something I definitely took for granted back when we had it in standard. Uh, losing it in standard feels really bad. So while we're in eternal, I'm going to pick this up and draw some extra lethals with it. And rounding us out, of course, we have Decimate, 6 mana, slow speed, deal 4 to the enemy nexus, close out the game with a little bit of direct damage, and that's really nice. I don't know when it's going to get reverted to 5 mana, but I would very much enjoy that. And that's it for the deck rundown. Now here's another live commentary game, so you can see how it plays out. And for the example game, we're going to be fighting LeBanc Lux. Eternal is supposed to have a lot of Lux. I'm surprised I haven't seen a ton of Lux Jace. Remember, that was like a really strong deck. Like, right before rotation happened, um, maybe people for gore. But yeah, let me get rid of Decimate. We keep Regard on one. We can play a Saboteur Boom Crew. So we want to have, like, multiple ones and multiple twos. That way we can play them all by attack three, since we're attacking on odds. And we don't want to keep Decimate. We'd rather draw into it later. Ooh, Annie. Um, Annie on attack one should be pretty safe into their regions. It's not like we're fighting, you know, Quietus from Shadow Walls or anything like that. Oh, Challenger, though. So they're playing an elite kind of deck, too. They have enough elite synergy to warrant running Squire and also hitting. That's a little annoying, because they could just, like, Squire Scythria and all of a sudden my Annie's dead. That's really sad. Laurent Duelist. All right. I mean, Annie's living. That I do like. We could do Pigeon as a blocker. Um... We could play Boom Crew and then not really do a whole lot. Pigeon is going to be nice on attack turn, though. I think we just take four, right? Use our health as a resource and just fully develop. We could do Boom Crew now and then play out triple ones on attack three. We could go with all of our skills and try to level Annie pretty soon. If we top deck Jin, we could almost get there. One, two, three, four, five. No, we would get there. Top deck Jin, go. Okay, it's not Jin, but it was close. Let's play the rear guard out instead then. Rear guard and pigeon. We'll go with our non-skill units because they're overall just a bit more powerful. The bonk. All right, we'll play pigeon. And we can also play Corsair. I think is a good one here because I don't want to attack with the saboteur yet. Uh, we'll do Corsair. And then we're also probably not swinging with Boom Crew Rookie because he kind of dies for free to LeBanc. Okay, ready. So we could do like this. That's really nice. 3-3, three, three, beats over anything, threatens LeBanc. 3-1, kills everything, um, trades even, and threatens LeBanc. And then Annie threatens everything. Looks good to me. Yeah, we'll just hold the Boom Crew Rookie for next time. Because we don't have to make him die for free. Make way. Yep, they take three and we get ahead on the board. Because there's like a lot of worlds where we could just top deck some stuns and make it really hard for their challenger unit to do anything. That's what's really strong about this deck is we could just be on Sunhawk, uh, Stagehand, Pirouette. Oh, there's my Jin. The Vanguard will have to fall. Gallant Rider, first time I challenge an enemy transforming into Calvary, so that's going to kill my Annie for sure. This is where I do wish I was on any of the stuns that I was just mentioning, um, but that's okay. We could uh, let the attack go through, then play Jin, and then next turn just pop off. I like that. Go ahead, swing. Yeah, makes sense. Very nice. Alright, Jin. Huh? 
Whoa! Annie's talking from the grave because I played Jin before it was fully rendered that she was dead. That's really weird. I've never seen that before. Bit of a bug, but alright. That preps a Jin Lotus Trap, one of three. Very good, very good. Oh, don't tell me of like a strike spell or something or cataclysm. That would just be like way too tragic. Let's go ahead and play the other boom crew. That way we're hitting for um, decimate on just the boom crew attack call before anything else. And they really want to like single combat or something. Oh, it's second LeBanc. Okay. Does that level her? It does. Okay, so now LeBanc has 3 HP. Though I don't think we care all that much. So the proper attack order here, since we're not leveling Jin, is we want to attack with him first. That way his attack skill goes up on the stack first, before any Lotus Trapping. So when it resolves backwards, Lotus Trap will resolve and then his attack skill will. So that's the order that we want. Because he's definitely not leveling. Yeah, he is not. We can also send in the Corsair. Just do full max attack pressure. Now check out this. Look at this skill stack. It's about to be so sick. Boom, boom, boom. The Lotus Trap. Boom, boom, boom. That's the second Lotus Trap. And since skills resolve backwards, that means the Lotus Trap is going to happen. And then another Lotus Trap is going to happen. And then he's going to shoot all stun targets. That's why we attack with him on the left. And he was very close to leveling. Yeah. Because right now, with this block... Jin's living, and they're uh, down to 1 HP, meaning they have to win next game, or next turn, I mean, and then kill off everything that deals even one damage, so pretty tricky position for them to be in, and that's me not opening Jin at the proper time and also not opening a stun. They kind of got away with what they wanted to do turns 3 through 4, right? Maybe 3 through 5, but we got to pop off. All right, they live with 1. one. Now it's time for them to kill Jin, kill me, or kill all of my units that deal any amount of damage. To that I say, good luck. Watch me just top deck decimate. Okay, or fervor. That's also really funny. <laughs> I will go ahead and put up this block, and then just use the fervor. There is art here, waiting. Yeah, because there's simply no reason to not try this. Yeah, GG. <laughs> Even if they have like whirling death and stuff, we just open attack. And the final deck I have for you, we are pulling a full 180 and playing some control with a Trundle set FTR. With a win rate of 55.62% and a play rate of 2.55%, it has cemented itself as one of the best decks as well. Its best matchups include the Trindamir Trundle FTR mirror match because we have deny and they don't, we can just deny their FTR and win the game for free. It's also very good in two timelines, Zombie Anivia and TF Swain. Now the worst matchups seem to be these super swarmy aggressive styles, Poppy Ziggs, Jin Annie, Pirates, and also Draven Scion. What differentiates this deck from regular FTR is the old timer combo. It's a very simple combo to understand, all you want to do is play Trundle at some point, whether you're ramping or not, want to get Trundle down that way he generates you the Ice Pillar in hand, then you play Ice Pillar which refills 8 mana, then you play old timer. Old Timer will resolve because you play exactly 16 mana with that 2 card combo and he recalls all enemy units, giving you a very big tempo swing and puts you ahead on the board. Also it's your attack turn, he gets to strike with double attack, so he's either killing something that the opponent plays or they're taking 12 damage. Really strong combo, really good mid game push, especially if you're ramping and you can do this like a couple turns early, it's really hard for the opponent to come back from. So getting into the list specifically, we have Faces of the Old Ones because we want to be doing a lot of mana ramping. That way we get to our combo faster. We have Tag Out to recall our allies for protection, but for the most part, probably going to be using this to recall enemy units, slowing down the opponent's strategy in typical Ionia fashion. In Cussive Palm, basically the similar function, we're going to be using this to stun an enemy while also getting a 3-2 body. Can use that to block or attack. 
double deny really good in the mirror match like i mentioned if the opponent is trying to play ftr or just any big spell that tries to close out the game or win the game outright well we can just deny for four mana and they have to surrender and use the crying poro emoji because it's very strong triple smooth mixologist four mana three four heal an ally or your nexus three and also create a coin Winter's Touch, more mana ramping, want to do that as much as possible. Uh, added bonus, if you already get to 10, then you get to draw one for one mana, so that's really cool actually. Winter's Touch is really strong. Next we have Place Your Bets, a little bit of draw consistency, making the combo a little bit easier to get to, and also maybe finding like your 8 cost stuff in case you're not beholding it right away, so that's really cool, you can flip the first couple turns and have that. Next we have our Champions, Set, 5 mana, 4, 5 Challenger. Um, we're not really playing around set too much, just like we're not playing around tr uh, Trindamir in normal FTR. We're just going to get this guy down as a 10-10, and he's also Challenger, so he's going to be annoying. But yeah, he's just in here because there isn't really anything else better to run. And, I mean, he can come up. If we play a bunch of mana, then we do get Showstopper. We're not abusing Showstopper, like, by double casting it, because we're not running Karma. We're also not abusing Coin, so this is just, like, a more honest variation of set. However, again, we're not fully playing around him. He's just kind of here as, like, a guest star. Next, we have Trundle, which facilitates our combo, of course, the old-timer combo, which doesn't have to be done with uh, Pillar, by the way. That's just, like, the easy way to do it, but... Yes, we are going to facilitate it by getting Ice Pillar. Like I mentioned before, Ice Pillar refills your mana. That's really strong for old timer. Get the combo. Also, he becomes an overwhelm win con. So if you level Trundle and then play Pillar at some point and then FTR, you're going to FTR out Set, who's going to be a 10-10, and then Trundle, who's going to be a 10-10 with overwhelm. And that creates a really strong win con. Next, we have Wild Mysticism, more mana ramping. It that stares. Once we do mana ramp, Obliterate all landmarks or deal three to all other units. Pretty big AoE board clear. However, what we want to do more often is the landmark obliteration. Now, why you might ask, people might not be playing landmark decks. Well, we force them to play landmark decks with our card called Buried in Ice. For nine mana at slow speed, we obliterate all enemies that are currently on the board, which also gets rid of their weapons permanently and put them in this little frozen tomb landmark. So this is a nice little two card, two turn combo. You buried in ice on defense turn when your opponent is fully setting up. Then you go into your turn and play it that stairs, obliterating all landmarks. So basically two card uh, ruination, but you also get an eight eight out of it. Really scary. Old timer, like I mentioned before, he's in here for that uh, two card combo as well. Voices of the Old One, just a little one of. Get two mana gems. Also, for the top five cards in your deck, draw each of them that cost eight or more, then place the rest into your deck. That includes like the Buried at Nice, Feel the Rush, Old Timer, Hit That Stairs, stuff like that. Really good at just filling your hand. Buried in Ice, which I mentioned, and then also rounding it out, we have Feel the Rush. Summon two different random champions from your hand and deck, grow their stats up to 10-10. One of the win cons, if we resolve it, opponent will probably surrender. Really big pressure on top of everything else that we're pushing in the mid game. And that's it for this deck rundown. Now here's a live commentary game so you can see how it plays out. And for the example game, we're going to be fighting Draven Scion, the deck that we covered earlier. Wow, that's a lot of ramp. Aces, Wild, Winter's Touch, Winter's Wild. Okay, um... This is infinite mana. I don't have any 8 costs in my hand. Maybe I get rid of one Mysticism? What if I resolve them both? I don't know. Um, let's just keep our hand. It's really interesting. Because if I draw any of my 8 cost cards, there we go, then my face of the old one is just going to give me infinite value. Like, quite literally. Faces. Then we have Concussive for Draven or for Scion. So that's a really good defensive tool. Sure. We are ramping. We're going up to five already, meaning we can get our first Wild Mysticism out. Yeah, we're going to ignore Draven for now, too. Mysticism. We'll get a little bit of a 2-2 body. Can use that to block if we really need to, but maybe we don't. It's going to Mysticism again. And then we can do, like, double Winter's Touch and, like, boom, we have, like, 10 mana. Now we're cooking. Um, sure, we can block that. I'm gonna prevent damage where I can. I can't do a lot right now, but what I can do is try to live. Another Wild Mysticism. Yeah, I mean, this is kind of cringe. We're very far ahead in mana. Like, very far ahead. We can even hit that stairs next turn as long as our faces doesn't get blowbacked. 
If we dodge any amount of blowing, we can play it that stairs if we desire. Only problem with that will be their um their card that makes them invulnerable. Risen Rider as just a unit. Another Risen Rider as just the unit, not discarding them. I find that kind of interesting. All right, we are on eight Axe mana. Coming right up. Recommit Axe to level Draven. Probably. I would imagine so. Oh, it's Scion. Okay, so also giving them Overwhelm. I could go to 6 and then die to double get excited or get excited blowback, but I'm not going to do that. Instead, I'm going to stun Mr. Draven. I can't block Feral Mystic to these because they're fearsome, so he's just going to chill for now. And then I can do the Winter's Touch. And boom, we'll be on 10 mana. That's kind of nice. I think I could have also floated and then played Feel the Rush on 9 floating 3. Right? But now we have the Feral Mystic, and that's super real. So let's go ahead and do Winter's Touch, draw, hit that stairs. Uh, I don't see a reason to not just slam that immediately. I got my own dudes. Uh, I think that's fine. Heal 3. I'm killing more of their dudes than my dudes. So that's kind of how I uh, think it's worth. But yeah, I definitely should have just floated, I think, and then played Feel the Rush. Well, wow, we're really cringe. We can just keep doing get that stairs over and over. Send it. I guess we can always feel the rush next turn. After we had like a safe board. That works too. Just feel the rush on defense and then go into next attack turn winning the game. Love to see that. My body is no longer my own. And we have deny as well. Zonite Urchin. Blowback. So they were on blowback. Okay. Feel the rush. And then I guess we just watch the opponent surrender. Because we're on 12 mana. And they're on like mm, 10 total. <laughs> After full floating. I mean, it's kind of scary. Mystic shot my face just to be mean. They're not happy with me. That mystic shot was definitely meant to send a message. go that's our one showstopper for the turn because we played 12 mana that's also something really important to consider we always just get one free showstopper for resolving FTR again we're not double casting it with like with karma but I mean that's still really good and get excited wow they had like nothing but direct damage get that out of here let's stop that show real quick we can't take five from anything and next turn we have deny so we are just good to go. We just went on open. Like we could do ice pillar and play slow, but yeah, we don't have to. It's a little extra. We just went through open plus deny. Yeah, another blowback. Almost. We'll just show them the deny and then take the win. So, like I said earlier, the Eternal meta feels incredibly different than Standard. If you want to try these decks or pick up some of your older ones that you used to enjoy playing, then definitely hop into the Eternal Ladder with the extra knowledge. This has been Meta Report. Thank you so much for watching and have a good one. Laters!